The Nirnoff Sculpin is amazing, but you know what makes it more amazinger for some people who like purple who don't hate purple like some people like my buddy Tim von Mickelstein? You tie it in purple. We're going to tie it in purple. Check it out. If you can't tell, I've been away for a while. I gotta get the old ankle repaired, so... To be honest, this is the first fly that I've tied in six weeks. Let's see how it goes. All right. So, the Near Enough Sculpin's a great fly. We did one in olive. And we're just gonna show you a purple variation. Sometimes when I'm fishing streamers, I'll like to have a light colored fly and a dark colored fly. Um, I think with a sculpin you can go all the way to light tan with them and uh, why not throw a purple one down there maybe down deep it's gonna look cool so here we go I'm gonna throw some barbell eyes on this is a TMCO 708 streamer hook which has a slight 40 degree bend and this is a great um, jig style hook it will ride hook point up so that's the only thing that I changed from the original um, and, and Dave Whitlock is the designer of this. We got to give him a shout out. Dave Whitlock, rest in peace. The dude uh, was a legend, just nice to everybody. In fact, when we released the last one of these, <clears throat> Emily reached out to say, hey, Dave said you, you did a great job. So that was super cool. So here we go. We, we did a modification and even Dave Whitlock is, is with the times. He says, do what you want with my fly, just catch fish. So. Here we go. Sorry, we deviated a little bit, but we're, we were just building eyes on there. They look about like this. You could use smaller eyes on this one. Brigham gave me the real giant, giant eyes. I thought I... Are these the eyes that were in the tutorial? No, I thought I swapped them. Those are the large. You put that... You put the small. Okay, people. Like I said, I'm, I'm brand new to this. And my assistant Gosh, gave me the wrong eyes. So if you ever need to take eyes off a hook, grab some scissors you don't like, jam them in there, cut them off. That's the fastest I've seen Brigham run out of this room. He's on his way to go get the smaller eyes. <laughs> All right, so Brigham rudely gave me the wrong size of eyes. I blindly tied them in. Upon further inspection, it looked terrible. So we took them off. We're putting on smaller eyes, and now we're in business. This is the small size. You could probably throw on some mediums. The large ones we had on there would probably work still, but they're kind of beefy. So we'll just crisscross these. Um, I just like to get them in there. Like you, There are a bunch of different ways you can do this. I just kind of go back and forth and then go around each individual eye a few times just to kind of build that bulk. Um, lead eyes will break on you if you put too much attention. So. Brigham's never had that happen because he's not strong enough. Let it be known. Glue those suckers down and if with a few more wraps of thread in between those it will kind of seep that glue down in there. And if it doesn't like this you can just get your finger in there wipe it on Curtis's desk. Alright, so we're going to tie in some tails <clears throat> what I'm using is a whiting hen saddle. This is grizzly dyed purple and there are really cool feathers in here. You could probably do some little tiny soft tackles with it, but we're going to use some kind of medium length feathers. All right, so I've got I've got a few feathers just like this I've farmed out and I'm going to just put them dull side together so they curve into themselves just like that and I want that tail to be about that long. So I'm going to pinch it where I like it and I'm just going to grab those stems and get them out of there. Let's see. All right. So when I tie these in, don't put a lot of pressure on and you can wiggle them around a little bit until they sit side by side just like you want it. And then tighten down in front of those first. And if you need to make any adjustments, you can. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here and I'm just going to wrap back to the feather. Now on some of them, I think even on the other one, I like trimmed out a little bit underneath there, but it really is not going to matter too much. So there's our tail and we're ready to tie in hackle. So the hackle is also going to be another feather from this, but I pulled one from further back that's a lot longer and it goes to more of a point. And I'm going to tie that one in tip first just like this 
and you can do reinforced wrap wire you can do all kinds of stuff to reinforce this I'm just tying it you know in the simplest form possible the body is just going to be some purple dub we've got the tactical SF dub from Folling Mill let's pull that out and we're going to build up a little bit of a tapered body we want to thicken the back and I mean uh, thin in the back and a little thicker as we go forward nice tight dubbing noodle I've been sitting in my house for six weeks with a busted ankle so I haven't talked to many humans so I appreciate you letting me film this video for you guys and if it seems like I'm talking too much it's because I've had very little real interactions in the fly fishing world for a long freaking time anyway here we go we're wrapping this up and I'm just kind of wrapping it on top of itself to build a little taper this is a real cool dubbing it kind of pokes out as you wrap it forward you could put this even on dry flies because it's a synthetic it won't absorb too much water but it will keep bulk <laughs> Okay, all right, so I'm gonna tie in two pieces of flash. They're like, I think they're, they're not two pieces. I think I have three or four actually. That one's too short. I should have leveled them up before I put them in there. All right, so these are just gonna lay on the body and go out the back by the tail. So to get that to work, I'm gonna just kind of start this hackle. You saw how I kind of had to fold it back to get it to start to wrap the right way and then on that first turn I'm going to catch the flash and pull my hackle straight down and toward me that will hold it in place and then I'm going to catch it on the other side with that turn and I'll probably do one more turn right there and then we're just going to probably spiral this up with the rotary because that gives the best hackly appearance I think should all just kind of sweep back toward the back be real buggy yeah I like and how we're looking here all right Let's see all right so take the flash and I'm gonna cut that a little longer than the tail that's gonna help that sucker just kind of wiggle back and forth and we are looking good so far that is a tasty looking bug so to finish off we're gonna throw a dubbing loop in there Please tell me I have dubbing loopy tools that I like. All right, and that means I, I like this top twist or the Smaian thing, or it just twists up fast. So we're gonna build a little bit longer loop than you would think because we're gonna wrap it around the eyes and stuff. And as you can see, I just as you can see, I just doubled up that loop. So I have two strands of thread on each side, and then I'm gonna flip my bobbin across there and, and uh, close off that loop. And now we're ready to build. I'm using diamond dub here, but you can use kind of any buggy dubbing like this. It has some flash. Um, the head on this can be a bunch of different stuff. You know, semi seal's a little long, but you could probably use that. You just do whatever you like. All right, we'll build a, a cool dubbing loop. If you want to learn how to do dubbing loops, we have a skill builder series, and I show this technique from an overhead view. Um, and you'll be able to see kind of how I can get it to, to lay in there like this. But the idea here is you want it to be really nice and precise. So as you can see in front, that's, that's a real sparse dubbing loop. And when I twist this up, it shouldn't be super thick in the, in the middle of the loop. All right, so there we have it. It's a little, it got a little thick there, so I can just take a piece of Velcro and just lightly pick this out. Okay, so there we have, oh, and you drop it. See, I told you I was out of practice. Wait, no, it was Brig that was out of practice. What happened? We, got, we had ourselves a whole boondoggle of materials going all in place. All right, so I'm gonna do probably two turns behind the eyes wrap around the eye in front and around the eye in back and then I'm just going to wrap the rest of that forward and try to mash a bunch in there. Sculpins have big fat heads so we'll end about right there 
And I'm going to pull all that back, build a nice little head there. And we'll throw a whip finish in there, and then we'll brush it out. Did I catch a little piece of flash in there? Get out of there. Haters. All right, imagine that I'm gluing this up with whatever glue you like. And then we'll rough this up, and look how cool this looks. So, mess with a bunch of different colors on this bad boy. But man, this is a great fishing little bug. Um, but look, look how that sits in the water. Woo! Brig. Brig's looking at it. He's like, I bet that tastes like a daggum grape skittle. <laughs> Give me that. Yum! All right, happy tying.